Hello and welcome to the new series of Drishti IAS. I am Pooja Devedi and in this segment today, we are going to discuss about voter verifiable paper audit trail. This topic is important from the perspective of preliminary examination, the concept as well as the facts and also GS mains paper second. So let's begin without any further ado, the news. What is the news? The news is that the Supreme Court led by the Chief Justice of India along with Justice Poparna and Hima Kohli, they have refused to hear any urgent petition with respect to increasing the matching of VVPAT. Now, this is very important. Why? Because we are going to discuss about the concept of EVPAT and EVM, the history, as well as what is the current status of VVPAT and what are the suggestions as a way forward. Because in your examination for means, you have to write that as well. So, I will present this segment with brevity. So, if we talk about EVM, electronic voting machine, this came into existence in order to replace the ballot system. Ballot voting system was replaced with the help of electronic voting machine in order to increase transparency, accountability and faith in democracy. For the first time ever, it was mooted in the year 1977. After that, the Electronics Corporation of India Limited, Hyderabad, it was ordered to build a prototype of EVM and that was trialed. And that was trialed in 1979 at a lower scale. But if we talk about after that, Bharat Electronics Limited from Bangalore, it was incorporated along with ECIL to design a better version. And then first time it was used in the general elections of Kerala 1982. However, because there was no law to ensure or to legitimize the usage of EVM in votes, that election was declared null and void. Okay. After that, in 1989, Representation of People's Act 1951 was amended to incorporate the usage of EVMs and three states, 25 constituencies in three states of Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan and Delhi witnessed the usage of EVMs and then in 2004 in the general elections of the Lok Sabha. Now see one thing, after 25 constituencies were did witness the usage of EVMs. Since 1998, 1999, in the year 1999 and 2000s, the number of constituencies started witnessing increase and incremented the usage of EVMs in the state legislative assembly. For the first time ever, in the general election to the Lok Sabha, the EVMs were used and that was in 543 parliamentary constituencies in the country at such a large scale. And then, because of the transparency, swiftness and acceptability of the system, it was, it was encouraged by the political parties in the meeting in 2010, 2010. There was a meeting of the political parties where the political parties did, did encourage the usage of EVM. They were very secure and they were very acceptable of the fact that EVMs are much better. So they said that, okay, let's try to introduce voter verifiable paper audit trail system so that more and more acceptance of the system, more and more transparency can be kept intact, not only with the political parties, but, the, but at the level of citizens as well. Okay, so then, as you see, this is the diagram, I will talk about this as well. So then, uh, what happened, the Bharat Electronics Limited and ECIL, they made a prototype of the VVPAT in 2011. And it was used on a lower scale in 2011. In Ladakh, that is Jammu and Kashmir, back then it was a state. Now, Ladakh territory as a union territory is different. Thiruvanthanampuram, Charapunji and East Delhi district of Jaisalmer. So, there VVPAT was trialed upon the prototype. And then, the conduct of election rules, 1961 was amended in the year 2013. And the commission used the VVPAT with EVMs. First time in by-election, okay, remember this fact. First time in by-election from 51 Noxen Assembly constituency of the Nagaland. Alright, so as I told you, I will talk about EVM and VVPAT. So, EVMs are basically an electronic system to record the vote. If any citizen is registering the vote in the EVM, it is electronically recording it. So, it has two units. One is the control unit and second is the ballot unit. So, before 2006, one ballot one ballot unit could be attached 
to the control unit with the help of a 5 meter cable. But after 2006, now four ballots, up to four ballots can also be connected. So one ballot unit can handle up to 16 voters. Okay. And then if we talk about the maximum number after 2006, as four ballot units can be attached, 64 voters can be handled by the ballot unit. Okay. And this is the VVPAT. All right. Now, what happens in VVPAT? Here is the better version. What is a VVPAT? So, VVPAT, whenever a citizen casts the vote with the help of EVM, there will be a slip that will be displayed containing the serial number, name, and symbol of the candidate for how many seconds? For seven seconds for the for seven seconds for the citizen to see and get get uh, whenever we cast a vote sometimes it might happen we are very confused about concerned about if we have casted the correct vote or not for this seven good seconds the citizen will be able to see and witness that the proper vote has been casted to whatever party he or she has voted for and then the slip falls into a sealed box the the slip that falls into the sealed box can be accessed by the polling officials and not by the citizens. Keep that in mind. Okay. And now what happens that this VV pad is the verifiability of the slips are used for what? Why do we need that? In order of any dispute, those slips can be accessed. And if there is any doubt, a shadow of doubt with respect to the voting, casting of the votes, it can be soothed. Okay. So, this is the entire system. So, what is the issue? Why are we discussing it? Because an urgent plea was placed that we need to match the VVPAT in more than what the Supreme Court has held in the Chandra and Chandra Babu Naidu versus Union of India 2019 when N. Chandra Babu Naidu along with certain other politicians went to the court in order for the court to order the election commission to increase the and to increase the matching of the VVPAT for better transparency, for better accountability. So, the question was how many EVMs must be installed with VVPAT because every region, every constituency will not be installed with VVPAT. Certain will be and on the basis of randomization, we will be able to match the VVPAT with the EVMs. Okay. So, how many EVMs must be installed with the VVPAT system in order to ensure free and fair election? So, they went to direct the they wanted to direct the Supreme Court to, and they went to Supreme Court in order for the Supreme Court to direct the election commission to verify 50% of the VVPAT slips in each assembly segment or constituency and coach the EC guidelines, election commission guidelines stating that only one randomly selected polling station in each assembly segment constituency will undergo verification of the VVPAT slips. And this is this is provided by the guideline. So, what did the election commission say? Election commission said, if 50% VVPAT slips were counted, double counted, this would delay the announcement of the result by good 6 days. First was that. And although the Supreme Court did say that we have to increase the number of booths containing VVPAT per assembly uh, segment, it was increased from 1 to 5 booths. So, there was it. But the current petition was like, we want more and more VVPATs and more and more, there should be an increase in the matching of the VVPATs. Okay, so this is it. What is the, how the election process goes through? It's very secure in nature. Much slinging at the time of results. Keep that in mind. Many a times political parties, specifically the losing political parties, will not question the VVPAT, will not question the EVMs before the election. They won't take any initiative of overhauling the system or to provide a better substitute but at the time of election whenever polls opinion polls and exit polls will come they start much singing on the entire evm system entire electoral process but it is pretty secure in nature so evm hacking software can not be changed first if it is tampered the entire machine will get manipulated and it will be blocked it won't work Memory manipulation, it would require free access to polled EVMs. Vote stuffing. No votes can be cast after the close button is pressed. 
and there are certain key safeguards such as from first level check to counting evms are evms in strong room 24 by 7 security is there parties and candidates witness participate in every stage of the process even after the evms when they are going to the strong rooms the parties can travel any representative or the candidate of a party can travel along behind the vehicle that are carrying the evm movement of evm vvpat is only by container trucks or sealed trucks vehicles transporting the important machines sealed with locks and paper seals as well shifting under 24 by 7 security is videographed in nature vehicles are tracked by gps and managed using election commission cvm management software advanced information to parties on opening or closing evm vvpat warehouses so this is the level of security in order to have an assurance about the about keeping the citizens faith in the electoral process okay so what is the way forward first the role of legislators is a must in order for any system to become more robust it is the legislators who are going to formulate any policies okay along with the judiciary but if it comes from the legislators it will be much more acceptable in nature if it is accepted by all the political parties then of course the citizens will fall through then we have to keep in mind what is the what is the better one better choice we have to be more effective and deal or bear with the lag of time or we have to become more efficient more time efficient and deal with less effectiveness until now there has been no legitimate confirmation with respect to the the underwhelming procedure of the electoral process with the help of evm so we cannot say that it is ineffective credibility as i said if legislators will have a legislation with respect to the electoral process if all the political parties in the meeting are okay with the process the citizens will fall through so the credibility won't be questioned now if we talk about the question for your mains examination what is a voter verifiable paper audit trail and how does it ensure a reliable democratic process suggest measures to make it more efficient and do 50 words okay so that's it for today tomorrow we shall meet again with another segment until then stay updated and thank you so much for watching